Well, the tough talking CEO at AIG is at it again, Bob Ben Moshe, threatening to resign last week unless the insurer's chairman, Harvey Golub, leaves the firm. With us now is the reporter who broke the story, Bloomberg's James Sterngall. James, glad to have you on with us this morning. Congratulations on the scoop. Not the first time that Ben Moshe has made some rather loud slash blustery comments. I mean, we heard him last year sounding off against congressmen, uh, saying he was going to quit unless uh, AIG was not sort of shackled by TARP as far as pay restrictions went. Is he going from blustery and outspoken to the boy who cried wolf? Is he losing credibility? Well, you are getting to a point where the turmoil in the boardroom is going to cause more problems. You can only threaten so many times before presumably somebody calls you on your bluff. And as I found out, the New York Fed in particular, which sits in on the board meetings because of their uh, uh, bailout, they have uh, have run out or are quickly running out of patience. But here's the other question. I mean, who would want to lead AIG right now? I mean, can, they sort of have to make it palatable at some level for him, right? You've just hit the $182 billion yeah. question, which is, if not Ben Moshe, who they've gone through five CEOs in five years. They uh, don't have that many people who can run such a huge and complicated company. So he does have that advantage. But still, there's only so much turmoil a company can take. So difficult times it sort of call for difficult measures. So in that way, maybe he's allowed to get away with being particularly bl blustery. What are the chances then, let's take it from the other angle, that Ben Moshe has enough power to send, for example, Golub packing? Anything is possible. And either of these two people, keep in mind, these are two people who essentially retired. Golub from American Express, Ben Moshe from MetLife. So in a way, they have nothing to lose. Uh, so one or the other could say, life is too short. I don't think I'm going to put up with this anymore. So one or the other could leave. But certainly the rest of the board, which is hopefully James, looking after taxpayers' interests. For the walk away factor here, Golub, it sounds like. I, I think Harvey Golub is there to stay. You think he's there to stay. But you think <laughs> Ben Moshe could walk out, or he's more likely to walk out than Golub? If I were a betting man, that there might not go. be That's a bad That's what we bet. wanted, James. Right. But is Ben Moshe right? I mean, this particular argument has come up because he is saying he wanted AIG's Asian unit to be sold to the UK's Prudential, albeit at a lower price. I mean, that's essentially what this particular conflict is over. That is the source, but I think that's probably at this point gotten much more widespread about chemistry. The, the bottom line is that Ben Moshe wants a free hand to run the company. The board usually chooses a CEO lets him make the decisions. If, at some point, uh, if the CEO loses credibility of the board, you change CEOs. All right, now, James, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You said if you were a betting man, I'm not saying it will happen, but could you handicap Ben Moshe leaving before year's end? Or do you think it'll take him longer to get completely disgusted? Well, I think that the ideally the taxpayers who own that company now, 79.9%, would love to see stability and would love to see him there running the company putting it in a place where it can pay back taxpayers. The prospect of his staying now, cer certainly where we stand now, does not look good. James, thank you very much. James Sterngold, the Bloomberg reporter who broke the scoop on Ben Moshe threatening to quit.